Now, the ongoing members of the National Assembly in action entered the second day with members being trained on their role in the House. We now join Chemutai going for the details. Chemutai, good afternoon. What can you tell us at this hour as regards the induction and developments there? Uh, well, Lillian, uh, members of parliament are still hold, uh, hold up in a closed-door meeting uh, with the representatives from the uh, National Police Service, that is the, uh, a representative of the Inspector General of Police, and also uh, representatives from the National Intelligence Service on matter security, and that we've not been allowed uh, to gain access because of the sensitivity of the discussions that will be carried out there. But earlier on, uh, the whole day, members have been in group meetings where they've gotten a bit of orientation on various uh, emerging issues, including, of course, the crucial matter of uh, committee formation. We know that the 12th Parliament uh, approved the formation of three new committees to join the ones that were there uh, initially, and one of those was one on public debt, uh, which will be crucial in aiding the country uh, find solutions to the economic issues affecting it. And uh, I remember yesterday, we even carried in our bulletin uh, uh, excerpts of the presentation by the CBK governor, Dr. Patrick Njoroge, talking about the country's state of the state of economy and actually just asking members of parliament to aid in coming up with legislative proposals that uh, will help bring down that debt which he warned if it rose further would um, impact delivery of, serv of services to members of the public including of course health and uh, issues of remuneration in terms of salaries. Uh, but later on in the afternoon we are waiting for this closed door meeting to end and once we go in uh, the CEO, the acting CEO of the National Government Government Affirmative Action Fund Magdalene Kipken Kipkene will be uh, appearing before the members and uh, speaking to them uh, about uh, that fund. We know that county women uh, representatives get that fund, which is crucial in facilitating uh, many developments in that region. So they will be getting oriented on the amount of monies allocated to that kitty and what uh, those monies should be channeled towards to ensure there is prudent use of resources. Also, Yusuf Buno, who is the CEO of the National Government uh, Constituency Development Fund will also be making similar presentations on the monies allocated to that kitty and of course what uh, that kitty uh, should be used for. We know that uh, CDF helps a lot in, um, in education. We've seen a lot of schools re uh, get a facelift in many rural areas and, and with uh, of course new members of parliament who joined the 13th parliament to be crucial for them to know what uh, purpose that money should be used for. But then uh, the elephant in the room really is, of course, uh, the High Court's declaration of the uh, 2013 CDF Act as unconstitutional and whether that will impact uh, the current act that is in use. And we've seen members of parliament protest and say um, uh, the action of the High Court only affected the 2013 Act and not uh, <clears throat> the act that they use now, which should be 2018. Um, so we will be waiting, of course, for that matter to also come up uh, for canvassing. But besides that, Lillian, uh, we've seen um, a lot of lobbying ongoing here at Safari Park where the 349 members of parliament have gathered. Of course, not all of them are here, but there is intense lobbying even as they wait uh, for Speaker Moses Wetangula uh, to give a resolution on the uh, leadership dilemma that is facing the House. Uh, both uh, camps, the Azimio La Umoja, one Kenya team on one end, and the Kenya Kwanzaa team on the other end say both have the majority in the House. And that that hot potato is now in the hands of Speaker Moses Wetangula, who is expected to give guidance on that matter before the House resumes its sittings. Uh, should be end of this month, 29th of September. And besides that, of course, lobbying is currently ongoing uh, for people who want to uh, represent uh, parliament in the Public Service Commission and we know uh, various individuals are eyeing that lucrative position because uh, besides the perks that come uh, with that position and the influence that comes with it uh, is of course uh, a little bit of control because PSE is what determines uh, the affairs of the house in terms of money spent and uh, it is one of the 
uh, issues that normally brings the Senate to the National Assembly also at loggerheads. And we saw uh, during the swearing in of Senate Speaker Amazon Kingi, uh, some members saying that this time the Senate should lobby to have more representatives because uh, it is not getting its uh, fair share of uh, what it believes they should be getting. So uh, we've seen a lot of lobbying for those who want to represent the National Assembly. Uh, we know that uh, Azimio has fronted um, uh, uh, John Waluke, Major John Waluke, as one of the possible representatives. On the other side, Kenya Kwanza has also proposed Naivasha, member of Parliament Jane Kihara and of course many other people may be coming up and uh, we're waiting to see how that lobbying will go on and eventually who will be selected uh, for that position. So Lillian, uh, still an intense day today. Uh, the sessions will end on Friday but tomorrow will be uh, a day when many members of parliament will be waiting to hear from Speaker Moses Wetangula on the fate of their allowances after their salaries and remuneration commission uh, gazetted what they say was uh, a cancellation of those allowances which of course members have opposed. So Lillian, uh, still a busy afternoon for us and we will be giving you subsequent updates of what transpires here at the Safari Park Hotel uh, at our sub